So you are sponsoring a clinical rapamycin trial. Uh, that's really good. So could you talk, could, could you kind of introduce the, ch- the trial that you're uh, sponsoring uh, and how, what will it be looking for? So this comes back to what we first started, um, trying to figure out ways to extend health span and how do you actually measure that? So one of the things that we have touched on is muscle decline um, as we age. And that decline starts at around 30 years old. So we've already got a fantastic way to slow down that muscle decline. And it's a good diet with regular exercise, particularly combining cardiovascular exercise and weight training. So any intervention that we that we're testing to try and reduce muscle decline as we age needs to be paired with exercise. So that leads us onto rapamycin. Rapamycin, it potently blocks mTOR. So we've already talked about mTOR a little bit. Um, rapamycin, when it's trialed by the interventions testing program, which in my opinion is the creme de la creme of my starter for, for some of the reasons that we've already gone through, over and over again, it extends mice lifespan. And it seems to be doing that through blocking mTOR. Now, in, in humans, when you block mTOR, you actually stop muscle building. So it sounds a, a bit bizarre that we're combine, combining um, rapamycin with exercise, because you think if you just give someone rapamycin, then you'd actually kill their muscles, which is not at all what, what we think will happen. What we think is that we need periods of time where we're switching mTOR on and building muscle, and we do that through exercise. But we also need periods of time where we're switching mTOR off and we use rapamycin for that. Because when you switch mTOR off, you activate another process called autophagy, which is the cell clearance process. So essentially, as we age, we build up all sorts of old cell components that that aren't efficient, they release oxidants, and they just need to be cleared away. So it's out with the old and then in with the new. So we think that if you give rapamycin once a week on the days that you don't exercise, and then for the rest of the week, you are exercising, we think that that combination will give even greater muscle performance compared to just exercise alone. So the trial that we've designed um, is, so, so we've actually changed the entry criteria. We want to trial it in 65 to 85 year olds. Both groups would be exercising but one group would be taking rapamycin once a week and the other group will be taking placebo once a week. So again, it's that combination of exercise and rapamycin to see what what will happen to muscle performance. And for the primary outcome of this trial, we've chosen the 30 second chair stand test. So essentially that's just how many times can you stand up and sit back down in 30 seconds, which is a great marker for muscle performance and strength in older adults. So we've chosen that functional outcome because If we can show that the combination of exercise and rapamycin does improve muscle performance, that's fantastic. That means that, you know, possibly most people as they get older should be on once a week rapamycin combined with exercise. And and hopefully by doing that, we can reduce the need for rest homes and private hospitals and people have got the strength to do what they want to do. So that's why we're doing the trial, because I think it will make such a massive difference Um, now we just need to robustly test it to see whether it will actually work or not. What's the current state of the trial at the moment? So we we're doing what's called a phase two trial, which is primarily a safety and feasibility trial. So like we've, like we've kind of touched on when you switch mTOR on, you build muscle. And when you switch it off, you don't build muscle. So this trial primarily will be making sure that the trial design is bulletproof, that we will get the answers that we want in in terms of, you know, does rapamycin work or not? And we're also testing for safety. So we want to make sure that by giving rapamycin once a week, that we're not going to be causing any adverse changes or, or any side effects to muscle performance. So once we've done that, then we can move to the phase three trial, which will actually figure out, will there be a performance improvement with once a week rapamycin or not? So right now we're fundraising for that phase two trial. um, And we're also finalizing the design of that trial to submit it to um, the ethics uh, committee. That's what they call it in New Zealand. And also submitting it to the trial registries so that people... So I think this is quite important as well. A trial registry um, is vital to make sure that there's no what we call p-value hacking. So essentially, a, a, a lot of research out there will will trial something, 
and they'll find an interesting result and, and they'll publish that result and say, look, our trial was positive. This is what we found. The trouble is if, if you do that, um, you, you haven't controlled for a lot of different factors for that one particular variable that that's positive. So by registering your trial in a, in a trial registry, you're essentially, you know, putting your not not reputation but you're you're you're, you're putting your design um down for everyone to see so that you can actually make sure that there is no p-value hacking that you've chosen one marker that will make your um, trial either a success or a failure yeah uh so if people wanted to contribute how would they do that so <clears throat> We're fundraising through YouTube at the moment. So YouTube has got their own fundraising uh, function. So under all of my recent videos, there's um, a button that you can click uh, to donate to the trial. Um, so unfortunately, clinical trials are incredibly expensive. So this trial, um, we've slightly increased how many people we want to be involved in this trial. So we're, we're testing this on 40 people. And so it, it's going to cost roughly about 400,000 US dollars. And people wonder, you know, for 40 people, why do you need so much money for this trial? So it, you have to pay for the ethics committee. You have to pay for, so since I'm the sponsor, so I'm, I'm designing the trial and I'm funding the trial, you know, through crowdsourcing, I'm not allowed to actually run the trial myself because there's a conflict of interest. So you have to pay for someone to actually run the trial and, and you know, test uh, all of the muscle functions that we want. You have to have a nurse to actually, um, you know, ring the patient's you know, every fortnight to make sure that everything's okay. Um, you have to have data oversight to make sure that there's, you know, no uh, side effects that that you're not reporting. You have to have an auditing uh, body to make sure that you're not just making the data up. You have to have insurance for the trial in case something goes wrong. You've, you've got insurance to pay for the medical care that, that a patient might need. So there are, oh, and, the, and then you, it's all the tests as well. So, so there's a massive list of things that you have to pay for with clinical trials. And that's why they're so expensive, unfortunately. No, I can, I can understand that. Yeah. So I read, I read the trial document, it had 30 people and you had 20 placebo and 10 treatment. So now you have 40, is it going to be 50, 50? Yeah, it's going to be 50 50. So, so we, we slightly, so we, we are still tweaking the, the trial design, um, but, but it's going to be 40 people in total, 20 20. And like, like I said, this initial trial, it's a phase two trial. So, it's primarily a safety and tolerability uh, trial. Mm -hmm. So, it's to make sure that we, we've got the trial design correct um, and that, that there's going to be no adverse events of taking rapamycin while exercising. Because the last thing we want to do is a trial that has you know, 400, 500 people in it. And we actually realize halfway through that rapamycin is causing problems with muscle performance. We don't think it will. We think it will improve muscle performance, but you need to go through these steps because the, the rapamycin human trials are limited uh, for, for, for this intervention. You, will you look for an effect in, in this trial and how much of an effect would you need to get a significant, like a, a, a p-value over under 0.05? So, so for, for this initial phase two trial, it's it's not a superiority trial. So, so what I mean by that is we're, we're not, we, we, we don't, we're, we're not going to have enough people in this trial to see will rapamycin improve muscle performance more compared to placebo. That's not the point of this initial phase two trial. It's primarily a safety one because to, to get enough people to show a difference um, between rapamycin and placebo, I'm... I'm, I'm guessing you would need about 500 people. So, so 250 in each arm. And to do that trial is millions of dollars. So we're, we're, we're not there yet. I, I hope to be one day with, with different grant uh, funding and crowdfunding and, and whatnot. But th this initial one will make sure that the trial design is bulletproof and that we will get actionable data. We will know after going through this process, will rapamycin improve exercise performance or not. And, and we're just going to let the data speak for itself. So essentially, it's a truth finding mission. I'm, I'm, I think rapamycin will improve muscle performance. But we're designing the trial so that um, if, if, if it does improve muscle performance, we will find it out. But if it doesn't, then it doesn't. So suppose you, you, you get to the level three trial, right? Um, the, the end goal would be that people can take rapamycin it would be like a supplement you take or something like like that because at the moment it's um it's a prescription medicine right you you can't actually get rapamycin 
so I think it would still be a prescription medication, but the, the, what, what I'm hopeful for is that people will be able to get this prescription as a way to slow down or prevent muscle decline as we get older. So I think it would be quite cool if we, you know, if we've got 90 year olds, who have got the strength of 50 year olds, that would be pretty awesome. Um, we're, we're a long way from, from proving that, that rapamycin can or can't do that yet, but you know, the, the hope is there. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, one day, again, if, if the data supports it and if it's safe and if it is effective, that rapamycin can be um, prescribed much like a, a statin would or much like aspirin would. Right. So you just see, okay, you're, us- you're losing some muscle mass. So I'll, I'll prescribe oh, rap- yeah, rapamycin. I'd, 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 I'd hope. I'd hope that it would be earlier than that. To be honest, I'd right. hope that if, if the data supports it, that people would be on this medication before their, um, their muscle noticeably declines. Because um, again, we're, we're trying to prevent that decline in the first place. Trying to reverse that decline, you, you can do it to some degree with exercise, um, but it's better to, you know, to hold on to what you've already got to rather than try and build it back up. 